Up next on C-SPAN, our schedule continues with a hearing today before the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee investigating the investment company Drexel Burnham Lambert Incorporated. The chairman of the subcommittee is John Dingle of Michigan. Subcommittee will come to order. On March 29, 1933, President Roosevelt sent a very important message to the Congress. I quote, there is an obligation upon us to insist that every issue of new securities shall be sold in interstate commerce, shall be accompanied by full publicity and information that no essentially important element attending the issue shall be concealed from the buying public. This proposal adds to the ancient rule of caveat emptor, the further doctrine, let the seller also beware. It puts the burden of telling the whole truth upon the seller. It should give impetus to honest dealing in securities and thereby bring back public confidence. This committee and the Congress responded by passing the Securities Act of 1933 and the following year again responded by passing the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Both of these statutes and the subsequent federal security laws were passed by the Committee on Interstate and Foreign Commerce, the former name of this present committee, the Committee on Energy and Commerce. Pursuant to Rule 10 of the Rules of the House, the Committee on Energy and Commerce is responsible, and I quote, for all bills, resolutions, and other matters, close quote, relating to, and I quote again, securities and exchanges. That same rule requires the Energy and Commerce Committee to review and study on a continuing basis the application, administration, execution, and effectiveness of the laws which are within the jurisdiction of the committee. Pursuant to that requirement of the rules of the House, on December 11, 1986, the Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations instituted its current round of investigative hearings. At the first hearing, the subcommittee examined the effectiveness of the market surveillance and enforcement systems in the light of the then recently discovered insider trading scandals. The hearing has been followed by hearings in 1987 in which the subcommittee looked at insider trading. The subcommittee also examined the issues of mergers and acquisitions and how investment banking houses can and have put companies into play. This subcommittee has worked closely with the legislative subcommittee chaired by our dear friend and colleague, Mr. Markey, currently dealing with legislation aimed at reforming the securities market. Material developed during the course of this subcommittee's investigation has been made available to improve the legislation being considered and legislation now being drafted by the chair by, and by other members of the committee. The subcommittee has been concerned throughout its inquiries about the openness and the fairness of the securities markets. As the Second Circuit Court observed in the case of Charles Hughes and Company versus SEC, and I quote, the essential objective of the securities legislation is to protect those who do not know market conditions from the overreachings of those who do. The question of fairness and protection of investors will be the subject of hearings today and tomorrow. These hearings will continue a succession of hearings in which this subcommittee and the committee has long been engaged dealing with matters relative to the securities market and, and relative to the stability and the good health of those markets as well as the concerns of investors. The chair will parenthetically observe that our hearings today and tomorrow are based upon thousands of pages of documents voluntarily supplied by Drexel Burnham Lambert. The subcommittee has issued no subpoenas to Drexel. These Drexel documents, delivered without any assertion of any constitutional or other privilege, speak far more eloquently than anything else with regard to the role of Drexel in the marketing of junk bonds, and indeed more so than any analysis that our subcommittee or any member of it uh, could offer. Accordingly, without objection, certain of these documents will be included in the record at this time. One issue that has been raised as a result of the hearing of the subcommittee held in October 1987 
was the use of high yield debt to finance hostile takeovers. High yield bonds, or as they are more commonly known, junk bonds, have played a significant role in the change in corporate America. These bonds are important to the American economy. They are one of the primary ways in which new small companies obtain growth capital. And as such, they confer great benefit upon the American economies. These companies provide more than half of the jobs created every year. The capital raised by junk bonds develops a great share of the new goods and services which make the, cap the economy innovative and competitive in the future. Inefficiency and diversion of funds in this market are of serious concern to the subcommittee of the nation. However, companies which have existed for decades, which have carried the brunt of our national defense through two world wars, which have provided employment in the heartland of America, no longer exist. They have been victims of takeovers financed through the junk bond market. Research and development budgets have suffered as millions of dollars have been diverted to pay high interest rates on junk bonds. In short, the competitiveness of the United States in the international market, indeed our balance of trade and the future of this country is impacted by junk bonds. In 1986, according to a recently released report by the General Accounting Office, more than $32 billion in junk bonds were issued. Of that total, approximately 40% were supposedly handled by the investment banking firm of Drexel Burnham Lambert. The one individual most knowledgeable of and most responsible for the dominant role of that firm uh, is Mr. Michael Milken. The subcommittee has hoped to obtain from Mr. Milken an understanding of how the market in junk bonds originally developed and what the role is for junk bonds now and in the future. And we hope that he will be able to offer us some insights today. The subcommittee is concerned about the liquidity of the market in junk bonds in the event of an extended economic downturn. We know from our analysis of public records that significant quantities of junk bonds are currently held in the portfolios of a number of federally insured savings and loan associations. We have also questions about the stability of these investments. We also know that a number of insurance companies and mutual funds have used and continue to use junk bonds as an investment tool to, to improve their financial performance. The chair understands that there is a proper role and a necessary role to be played in the issuance of these below investment grade bonds. At the same time, the committee is concerned that the market remain liquid and that general rules attending all securities issuances be observed and that the rule announced by President Roosevelt in 1933 still be followed. In other words, let the seller also beware. The chair wants to emphasize that the subcommittee's proceedings today are neither civil nor are they criminal. The function of the subcommittee today is to make a series of inquiries. The functions of, of the subcommittee will be to see to it that our responsibilities under the rules to carry out oversight on matters under the jurisdiction of this committee are fully and properly carried out and that they are carried out in a fair and proper way. The chair will observe that these are not criminal proceedings, although the constitutional rights of persons appearing before the committee will be very, very carefully protected. The chair also wishes to observe that the proceedings today are not civil legal proceedings in the judicial sense, and that although there, again, the rights of all parties will be fully protected. The proceedings are the proceedings of a congressional committee acting pursuant to the rules of the House of Representatives and will entail that not only the burdens of the committee to honor the rules and the constitutional rights of all persons appearing before us are properly attended to, but also that persons appearing before this committee provide the necessary assistance to the committees within the framework of their constitutional rights and the limitations on the powers of the committee. The committee will observe these rules established in the rules of the House and the different statutes as well as the Constitution with, Constitution with great care. The chair will insist, of course, that all persons appearing before this subcommittee will observe them with equal care and equal vigor. The chair recognizes a gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Bliley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The hearing today and the hearing scheduled for tomorrow 
or for the purpose of examining possible irregularities in trading of high yield bonds, specifically with respect to transactions between an underwriter and affiliates of the underwriter. We are making this examination through a study of three particular cases involving the firm of Drexel Burnham Lambert. The high yield bond market has exploded in the last few years as these securities have been increasingly used for a variety of corporate purposes. Our objectives in the hearings is not to debate the value of high yield bonds generally. Their economic importance is, in my view, indisputable. The purpose of this hearing is to determine to what extent existing securities laws and regulations apply to the transactions we are examining today and what, if any, additional legislation may be necessary. At the appropriate time, we intend to ask direct questions about some of the transactions in the three cases presented. We will attempt to find out why these transactions occurred and what the explanations are for them. Although some may believe the fact pattern suggests problems, I am not prepared to draw conclusions before hearing all the facts and explanations. We are considering important issues, but I am concerned about the way in which these issues are being presented. I am concerned that popular perceptions are being created here that tend to lead us to prejudge the issues. For example, calling the employee accounts that we are looking at insider accounts inflames the rhetoric but does not assist us in our analysis of the issues. And everyone should realize that this term is not widely used to describe this type of account. As far as I can tell, this term was used in a 1959 SEC release and a 1966 court case. I believe that this type of rhetoric is being used here to create a preconception. Let's not make conclusions by semantics. Let's carefully examine the facts and the legal and policy issues. We know from our investigation thus far that there are conflict conflicting views on whether and how relevant law applies to the type of transactions we are looking at. We need to weigh, weigh these views carefully and determine whether current law is sufficient under these circumstances or needs improvement. Let me say in conclusion that I have communicated with the chairman my concerns that we follow procedures that will allow us to get the facts we need in a manner that minimizes the attendant risk of prejudice and adverse publicity. It has been widely reported that the witness at today's hearing is under investigation by the U.S. Attorney and the SEC. We've known that Mr. Milken intends to assert his constitutional rights and that he will decline to answer any questions. For these reasons, I don't believe that our hearing today furthers the investigation of the subcommittee, and I don't believe it has been fair to call this witness under these circumstances. I have been assured by the chairman, however, that these hearings will be conducted in a fair manner, and I trust that this course will be followed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure, thanks, gentlemen. Were there further opening statements? Yeah. The, um, sure. Gentleman from Pennsylvania? Mm -hmm. Gentleman from New York? Chairman, I do have an opening statement. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this subcommittee is engaged in an important investigation of the nation's securities markets. This investigation has focused on the high yield bond department of the investment banking firm of Drexel Burnham Lambert and has examined several issues of debt securities. These issuances and subsequent trading activities raise important legal and policy questions that we should explore carefully and dispassionately. Our inquiry should be thorough and we should not jump to any conclusions until our investigation is completed. The Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations has the right and the duty to examine the securities markets to determine whether they operate in the best interest of investors, the economy, and the public. We also may inquire whether the securities laws should be strengthened to outlaw practices that are legal but are nefarious, destructive, and unethical. We cannot decide whether new laws are needed until we have a thorough investigation, a thorough understanding of current industry practices. Our witness today is a man who is under investigation and scrutiny by the federal government. It has been widely reported in the press that Michael Milliken has been the subject of investigations by the SEC and the U.S. Attorney. And therefore, while Mr. Milliken may be eminently qualified to help our subcommittee because of his expertise in and knowledge of the workings of the junk bond industry, everyone here today fully expects 
that he will assert his constitutional rights and decline to answer this subcommittee's questions. And certain questions, Mr. Chairman, I intend to propound relative to Drexel's activities as financial advisor and investment banker for a home shopping network of St. Petersburg, Florida. I am committed to participating in this subcommittee's efforts to uncover securities fraud and detect abuses in the securities markets. I received assurances that the transactions we are examining in connection with this inquiry do not in any way relate to other investigations being undertaken by other federal authorities, and I am therefore hopeful that we will make progress today in furthering our investigation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair, thanks, the gentleman. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I am pleased that you have called this hearing to explore the trading activities of high-yield securities by Drexel Burnham. It is important that as elected representatives we strive to always be on the lookout to ensure that there aren't any market manipulations or abuses in securities transactions. I am especially interested in this series of hearings since there are thousands of investors in my congressional district who have faith in our capitalistic system. I want to make sure they are protected from devious schemes that seek to defraud them or deny them the opportunity to make a maximum return on their investments. My interest also stems from the fact that there is a company in my district which is a major employer. This company has recently filed suit in the U.S. District Court alleging that Drexel and a so-called junk bond network manipulated its stock downward. Many of my constituents are investors in this company. The stock of this company reached a high of $47 early last year and is now around $5. You must admit this is a pretty dramatic drop, one which is of more concern to me when one considers that most of my constituents are senior citizens on fixed incomes. Needless to say, I am most anxious to see how the high yield bond market works and how a firm performs its role as both underwriter and market maker. I look forward to the testimony we will receive today and tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure, thanks, gentlemen. Mr. Milken, uh, the uh, Chair welcomes you to the committee. And we thank you for your presence today. The Chair has several qualifying matters to address before you are recognized. First, the Chair advises you that copies of the rules of the committee, the rules of the subcommittee, are there in the red and the beige books which are before you. Those are there to advise you of both your rights as you appear before the committee and also the limitations upon the power of the committee conduct its inquiries today. The Chair asks if you have any objection to appearing under oath at this time. No. No. The Chair then inquires if you desire to be represented by counsel. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I assume that Mr. Williams, who sits there to your left, is your choice of counsel. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. You made an excellent choice of counsel. Uh, the chair will observe that Mr. Williams was my criminal law prof back in Georgetown University Law School a number of years ago. I hope he remembers me with the same affection, respect, and kindness that I do him from our associations <laughs> those days. Uh, if you have no objection then to being sworn, Mr. Milken, will you please rise and raise your right hand? Yes, sir. Mr. Milken, you may consider yourself to be under oath. Mr. Chairman, uh, before the interrogation begins, please, sir, may we respectfully invoke Rule 11, 3, uh, 2 regarding television, radio, and live photography. The provisions to which you allude, Mr. Williams, are, uh, would, you, would, you, would you want to state them so that the Chair has clearly before yes, it sir. the reasons uh, for it, it, rather the rule and the reasons for it? Rule 11, Clause 3, F2 of the Rules of the House of Representatives provide no witness served with a subpoena by the committee shall be required against his or her will to be photographed at any hearing or to give evidence or testimony while at the broadcasting of that hearing by radio or television is being conducted. 
at the request of any such witness who does not wish to be subjected to radio, television, or still photography coverage, all lenses shall be covered and all microphones used for coverage turned off. Mr. Williams, the uh, chair observes that you have asserted on behalf of your client an absolute right under the House rules. The chair instructs that all, all television cameras and all microphones shall be shut off at this particular time and the lenses shall be capped and, and or the cameras will be uh, faced towards the wall. So at this particular time, the chair uh, instructs our guests who are appearing here with television cameras, microphones, uh, devices of, this, of that kind that they shall be turned off, capped on the lenses, or faced towards the wall of the committee so that your rights, Mr. Milken, are fully protected under the rules of the House. Following the hearing, the subcommittee chairman and others discussed this morning's proceedings. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm accompanied by my two good friends, Mr. Slattery of Kansas and Mr.